for a few more people to sign in, but my name is Shalon Wilkins and I'm a registered holistic nutritionist. I've been in the health and wellness industry for eight years and um, I've spent the last few years doing um, education on women's health um, and mainly focusing on our hormones and our menopausal years and perimenopause and and things like that, more of just educating women to take control and ownership of their health and to ask the questions. And my really, my biggest thing is for women to redefine their health. So being really in tune with your body and, and um, you know, taking a stand for, you know, your own health and, and um, being proactive in that. So I've been doing, this is my third year with Nature's Fair doing the Women's Health Series, and I've loved every single session that we've had. Um, so thank you so much. If you are joining us back again for the third series, this is going to be a great one. We have our special guest Lorna with us. So I'm super excited. Um, I'll let Lorna introduce herself now and then we'll get started um, on our first session. Thank you, Shalan. And thank you for inviting me on this women's series. And thank you to Nature's Fair. Uh, my name is Lorna Vanderhaeg. I'm a women's natural health expert and I've been researching and writing on nutritional medicine now for 35 years. I have a master's in nutrition. I have a second degree in biochemistry and I've authored 13 books on nutrition. And I absolutely love the women's health uh, series, anything to do with hormones. And, you know, I think that a lot of us are really suffering with our, with our hormones and the effects of our hormones. And we're not really getting the help that we need at our doctor's office. So really, the goal is to teach you as much as we can about how you really should feel and also <laughs> the questions to ask your doctor so that you can get uh, optimal care when you go there. At a minimum, get the right tests that you need to have done. Yeah, yeah for sure. Awesome. Well, it looks like we have a few more people that have joined in. So let's just jump into the conversation. And that's really how it goes. You guys, if you were just joining the Lady Series, um, that's how we do it. So this is an open conversation. So if you have any comments, like I said, or questions, throw them in the chat box. But tonight, Lorna and I are just going to talk about our thyroid. Um, this is a personal one for me. And one of the reasons this is the first year I've actually put this, um, topic into the women's series, because I feel like it is, um, overlooked quite a bit. And I'm sure Lorna can agree when we're talking about our thyroid health, um, especially when we're talking about women's hormones, um, because they're all linked together. And I'm sure for those who've attended the women's series, I always say, um, you know, all of our thyroids are, are, sorry, all of our hormones are all linked together. So when one is out, generally a few of them are out. And when you're looking at dealing with hormonal imbalances and things that are happening in our body, and we're talking about our hormones, it's really important to look at the big picture. And as, as Lorna was saying, that a lot of the times when we go to the doctors, we intuitively know something is going on in our body. And my biggest thing that I've, I've ever, when I've worked with my clients and in my practice has been like, your body t sends you signals and, you know, signs all the time. And it's telling you when something's out of balance. And sometimes we go to the doctors and we're like, we can't really put our finger on what's happening, but we just feel off. And sometimes our doctors are, you know, very proactive and they'll <clears throat> do a bunch of testing. And then some of us will go to the doctors and they'll say, you know what, it's your age. This is normal. Um, maybe try and exercise, try and change your diet. And then they send you on the way without doing any examinations or testing. So I know for myself personally, and my doctor now is great, but before, when I first got, became a holistic nutritionist, this was the beginning of my journey of being like, Hey, there's a big gap here for women understanding what's going on because I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism, um, in the beginning five years ago. So that was the beginning of me being like, wait a minute, all of these things that have been going on in my body and all of these, like I knew something was off when I started understanding all of these signs and symptoms that was happening. I was like a light bulb went off and then I kind of realized everything else. So talking about the thyroid tonight, um, like I said, it's coming from a personal side and the ways that I knew that I had something going on in the signs and symptoms and then things that had uh, progressed from that. So um, I think what we'll do is kind of talk about what the thyroid gland is. I don't know how many women who are listening to us right now really know what the thyroid does. Um, maybe they've, you've had some questions about what the thyroid is. Maybe you've gone to the doctor, you've been diagnosed with hypo or hyperthyroidism. Um, maybe you've heard about, you know, sluggish thyroid. Um, you know about the hormone because you've attended women's series before and you've heard me talk about thyroid hormones and adrenal glands. So, our thyroid is what we call our master gland, and it sits on the front of our, in our throat here. It has actually like a butterfly shape. Um, 
And often when we think about our hormones, um, we don't really realize how important that little gland is to all of our other hormones. Um, it actually helps control um, the release of other hormones in our body and it regulates our metabolism. It's, it regulates our digestive tract. It regulates our body temperature. So it does a lot of things in our body and it's heavily influenced even by our adrenal glands. So our thyroid plays a, you know, a pretty important role when we're talking about um, different hormones in our body from our stress hormone all the way down even to our sex hormones like our estrogen and progesterone and DHA and things like that. So everything is entwined. And I know, Lorna, you, you've written a bunch of books and you've really specialized in on, on women's health and hormones, but I know you spend a lot of attention to talking about thyroid conditions with women because this was something that was often overlooked as well, right? Well, you know, 20 to 25% of Canadian women have low thyroid. Yeah. So that's a huge number of women. I mean, we have a, a large number of women and then we have a category that are what we call subclinical low thyroid. Mm -hmm. So that's the woman who keeps going to the doctor's office. She thinks her thyroid is out of balance because she's looked at all the symptoms and the doctor keeps saying, no, your thyroid is fine. So you really have to understand how thyroid is tested, especially in Canada. And we have a range of normal. So you go to the doctor, you ask for a TSH test, which is a thyroid stimulating hormone test. Mm -hmm. And the range of normal is 0.5 to 5.5. Now you would think low thyroid would be the low number, but that's not the way it works. The higher the number that you get back on your test, the lower your thyroid is, meaning that your doctor won't prescribe you thyroid medication mm -hmm. until your TSH test is over five. Now, by then, most women have packed on extra weight, their hair has fallen out, they're depressed, their skin is dry, they're aging faster, they might have osteoporosis. If they're a woman trying to get pregnant, she's probably had a couple of miscarriages. So this is a big problem. And they, they figure there's an additional 30% of the population that hasn't even been diagnosed with low thyroid yet. So we are talking about a lot of women who are suffering with low thyroid. So I, I always say the first thing you've got to do before you go on a weight loss program or before you take a pile of supplements to fix your hair loss is go get your thyroid checked. Yeah. And the big kicker here is you have to know where your number should be because the range of normal is too broad. You want your TSH test to be below two. And if it is above two, then, and you have the symptoms of low thyroid, which I'll list off in a second here. Um, it means that you have subclinical low thyroid and it's probably gonna take years to get diagnosed properly at the doctor's office. And just to give you an idea of what the symptoms are. So anemia, heavy periods. If you have heavy periods, they're often due to low thyroid. Low thyroid that's not being treated properly anxiety, depression, constipation. And whenever women have terrible constipation that is not being relieved by diet changes, I guarantee you it's low thyroid. Mm -hmm. Hair loss, dry skin, weight gain that you just cannot budge and never ending menopause symptoms. You know, menopause should only last about 18 months. If you're still getting hot flashes and night sweats years later, you need to have your thyroid checked. And I think doctors have forgotten that the thyroid is involved in your mood control. So, you know, crazy moods, feeling sad, crying, depression, anxiety. These are all things that could be linked right back to your thyroid. Even congestive heart failure in women now they believe is associated with poorly managed low thyroid. So it's a, it's a big concern, and I think it's an underlying problem for a lot of women. Oh, for sure. And some of those symptoms, and that's that. Some of those symptoms that you were mentioning, those were what was happening with me. And and personally, like one of the things is hair loss. So that was the biggest trigger for me because I actually gained a quite a bit of weight after I had my second baby, and that's kind of when I started to notice some things. Like I had postpartum, had that depression, gained a bunch of weight. Um, but it was a hair loss and everybody, my hairdresser, everybody was like, this is all associated with having a baby, but my hair was falling out in clumps. It still falls out in clumps. So it's much better now, but I've always had, it's the hair loss. My hair got quite thin 
and the constipation and the fatigue. Those were the three things. And the fatigue was, it is associated with, you know, obviously adrenal insufficiency and adrenal fatigue, but the fatigue that's associated with hypothyroidism too. I used to at about three o'clock in the afternoon when I'd be driving, would almost fall asleep at the wheel. Like it's not the fatigue, like you kind of think you need to have a nap. It's the fatigue where you're like, I'm nodding off. Like I, I can't stay awake. It's yeah. absolutely, it's, it's debilitating. Um, so a lot of those symptoms that you were talking about, that's what was happening with me. And a lot of the times it was brushed off. It was just like, you know, you have a new baby or, you know, maybe you just need to exercise more. And like I said, the hair loss was a lot of it was like, you've just had a baby. This is quite normal. As you get older, it's your hormones, but nobody ever really looked at it like thyroid. And one of the things um, that we do know too, is that hypothyroidism can also be genetic. So women, my mom was diagnosed with hypothyroidism when she was in her early fifties. And so going through a lot of the same symptoms, once she got diagnosed and is actually put on Synthroid, then her, you know, she's actually ended up losing weight and her symptoms start to subside. So it can be genetic as well for women. Um, and often we, even when we go in for physicals, I know my doctor does, she just tests me now, but a lot of the times doctors won't even think to test about the thyroid or even women to even ask to have their thyroid checked. Um, so it is definitely one of those, those things that should be one of our yearly when we go in to get mammograms and our physicals be something that we follow up with the doctor to be like make sure you check my thyroid especially because women are eight times more um they're eight more times likely to develop hypothyroidism than say um, uh, for men so it is quite common as you mentioned well it is and the having a baby and having your hair fall out there's two things that go on there first before you have your baby you should make sure your thyroid is below two because A, you can get pregnant easier, you have less risk of miscarriage. Mm -hmm. uh, as well, women who have adequate thyroid hormone tend not to have heavy periods. Heavy periods lead to anemia. It's harder to get pregnant. Then you have a baby. Having a baby is a big stress on the body. And mm -hmm. stress, so we talked. About, you talked about this a little bit at the beginning, the adrenal glands, which help you deal with stress, are directly linked to your thyroid. They mm -hmm. talk to one another. The more stress you're under, the harder it is for your thyroid to function properly. So you've just had a baby. It's a big stress. Uh, they now know that there is a direct connection between low iron and low thyroid and severe postpartum depression. And I think they should be checking women's thyroids more often, especially if they're having a baby. And of course, the hair loss was a result of blood loss and low thyroid. So you got the double whammy with the baby. And a lot of women do suffer with this. But hair loss is, is the indicator because it's so profound. When you have hair loss associated with low thyroid, it, it's quite severe. And the weight gain, you know, I have women who say to me, look, I hardly eat anything and I can't lose a pound. And then they have they, they go get their thyroid checked because I'm adamant that we should get our thyroid checked. And they discover that they've got subclinical low thyroid. That means they're still getting the normal thyroid test at the doctor's yeah. office, but their thyroid numbers are getting so high that they're going to gain weight. And you can gain a lot of weight yeah. when your thyroid is low and it's very hard to lose it. So it's important to get it back in balance. But one of the things I want to say about this low thyroid issue without being diagnosed properly is that it increases your risk of breast cancer. So mm -hmm. heart disease and breast cancer in women. So it's very important that we get that thyroid checked and that we get the number down below two. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, subclinical, that is, that is actually how it was for me as well. My doctor, um, we did the blood tests and my TSH was in the normal range. And she kept assuring me that, you know, you're in the normal range. There is no reason to believe that you have hypothyroidism. And it actually was my natural path because I paid for the additional testing to check my, you know, my T3, T4 levels or my F for pre my FT4 levels. And that was when he was like, absolutely, you will, you know, you have hypothyroidism because my TSH was still sitting in that normal range. And that is the hard part when we're talking about conventional medicine. And I'm not saying anything negative about doctors or anything like that. But if it comes back in that normal range and we don't keep questioning with these symptoms, 
often women don't get diagnosed and we have to either pay for the, the test privately and or go to see a natural path to, to pay for the tests the testing, which I recommend to people sometimes if they have a lot of these symptoms um, that are associated with hypo and even hyperthyroidism, because there can be two of those. Um, hyper is when we have too much thyroid uh, hormone, yeah. and hypo is when we have too much or too little. Um, very different symptoms, but still associated with the thyroid. But more commonly, we get that that hypo. So I did it. That it took me probably a few years until I finally got the right diagnosis to being like yes. Um, you know, you do have hypothyroidism. And like I said, I was like, thank you. Finally, like it was kind of some sort of answer for me to feel like I wasn't crazy because yeah. you kind of feel like that. You feel like a hypochondriac, maybe a little bit. You're constantly going back to the doctors. You're like, there's something wrong with me. And, you know, and the weight gain, like um, my husband has always said, he's like, you're the most active person on the planet. You're working out, but I can gain weight very easily. So mm -hmm. when my thyroid is, you know, my levels are not where they need to be, um, I definitely can gain weight. I can look at food, I feel like, and I'm gaining weight. And it is hard. It's a lot of, you know, having to eat the right foods, watch the foods that I'm eating, and exercise, and it doesn't come off easily. Um, no, and the thing is, is that there are certain foods that block the uptake of thyroid hormone, yeah. and there are certain substances that block the uptake of thyroid yeah. hormone. So. Uh, often when women go on the birth control pill, they'll shift their thyroid because estrogen and the birth control yeah. pill contains, you know, seven times the amount of estrogen we give to postmenopausal women. So it's not, there's nothing low dose about the low dose estrogen birth control pill and estrogen blocks the uptake of thyroid hormones. So if you're on estrogen replacement therapy or the birth control pill, you're blocking your thyroid. We know that soy products block yeah. the uptake of thyroid hormone. We know that fluoride uh, blocks the uptake of thyroid hormone. So there's a lot of things assaulting our thyroid on a daily basis as well. Yeah. And so, you know, all of these things combined and the more stressed out you are as a woman, the higher your estrogen levels will be, which also blocks your thyroid hormone. So it, you, we're kind of in this vicious cycle with thyroid. And the other thing I want to say is we need to protect this thyroid. When mm -hmm. you go have dental x-rays or mammograms or a CT scan, they've got to protect your thyroid because it is very susceptible mm. to any type of radiation and onslaught as well. So we really yeah. need to love our thyroid. <laughs> Absolutely. And I know you mentioned we talked about our adrenal glands um, and the, the role that the adrenal glands play in it. Um, one of the things working with clients, too, is often when I started working with them, they were like, oh, I, I take Synthroid for, you know, my thyroid condition or I have hypothyroidism. And, you know, a lot of the times um, women would come to see me because, A, they wanted to work on losing the, the weight and get into eating the right foods to treat thyroid conditions, not to treat thyroid conditions, but to support their thyroid health. And a lot of times this is uh, thyroid conditions are linked to autoimmune diseases, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, lupus, Hashimoto's, those kind of things are all, all under the auto, you know, autoimmune conditions. But I always said to them, I'm like, you know, we can, we can start talking about your thyroid, but you definitely can't ignore your adrenal glands. And you can't treat your thyroid if you're not look, treating, you know, your, your adrenal glands. And, and things that would look like that is looking at our stress levels and, you know, our caffeine intake and are we getting enough sleep? And because we know obviously cortisol and melatonin and all the hormones that are associated. So if we are under a high amounts of stress, you know, we're not looking after ourselves. We're not sleeping properly. We're not taking herbs and supplements that help to support our adrenal health. Then it's kind of going to be working against us with treating our, our thyroid because they go hand in hand. Um, and a lot of women and people, I shouldn't just say women, when they have thyroid conditions, aren't told about looking at their stress levels and, and supporting their adrenal glands. They're just told to take a medication every day and not looking at other surrounding factors to help with the thyroid conditions. And I know a lot of people, myself included, is that I do desiccated. Um, and I didn't want to go on thyroid. And that's just because, or sorry, synthroid, because I was just very stubborn. But um, 
now, you know, a lot of times people want to come off their medications or when they're mm -hmm. taking Synthroid, their levels, they get their levels checked all the time, but then they have to increase their dosaging because, you know, they're not looking at, they're not eating properly. They're not looking at their stress levels. So it's still the thyroid condition isn't improving. And so they stay on medication long term when they're really looking to come off of, the, of their medications. So it's yeah. really important when we're talking about thyroid health. My, my thing about thyroid medication is if you were lucky enough to actually get prescribed it because yeah. the doctor actually believed that you had low thyroid, you should stay on it. The, the key yeah. thing is we don't want the dosage to have to keep being increased. So yeah, Synthroid is T4 thyroid hormone and yeah. your liver is supposed to convert T4 to T3. T3 is the more potent, more active thyroid hormone. And when you're on Synthroid long-term, what can happen is the body stops converting T4 to T3. Mm -hmm. So when you first went on Synthroid, you probably felt great. But over time, you've noticed your symptoms come back. You're gaining weight. Your skin is getting dry again. You're not feeling as happy as you were before. Your hair is falling out. And so the doctor increases the dose. But it doesn't do anything because... You're not converting T4 to T3. And this is why I really like key nutritional supplements. First off, you don't come off your thyroid medication. Thyroid controls, thyroid uh, hormones control your heart rate. Mm -hmm. They control a whole host of metabolic processes in the body. So you don't decide, oh, I don't like my thyroid drugs and throw them in the garbage. That's not a good thing to do. No. So we don't recommend that. Um, but what I do recommend is that you support the body with the nutrients that you can buy at the health food store to make your thyroid function better and to get your thyroid converting T4 to T3. And mm -hmm. things like ashwagandha, which ashwagandha is so wonderful because it increases T4 thyroid hormone. It works directly on the thyroid gland, so it's safe. It's not working on your pituitary. A lot of the other yeah. products work on the pituitary, which to me is a little bit scary because the pituitary is the master gland. And so it's important that we always look at safe ways of treating the thyroid. And the other great thing about ashwagandha is it lowers cortisol, your stress hormone. So it works on the adrenals and it works on the thyroid. And if you combine Googles with your ashwagandha, you get the conversion of T4 to T3. So there's a little cocktail that I like people to take, a little tiny bit of potassium iodide because it is a three-pronged form of iodine, which you understand quite well, that is directly utilized by your thyroid. Tyrosine, which is found in protein. So protein is good for us and it's really good for your thyroid. And then some ashwagandha and some Googles. And if you take that little concoction every day and you're in the subclinical low thyroid category, you may never need medication. Yeah. If you're already on the medication and you take these nutrients, you will most likely never have to have your thyroid drugs increased. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing because too much thyroid hormone, whether it's the desiccated thyroid that you're taking or Synthroid, too much of it increases your risk of osteoporosis like fivefold. So we've really got to find that nice dance in there with the amount of drug that people are on. For sure. And I do see I'm looking at some of these questions. You've answered a lot of them here. Um, but do a lot of the questions here are talking about even just like the diet and we touched lightly on that. But foods that help support, you know, our thyroid health. And it is important to look at, I know um, for myself, and I talked about autoimmune conditions, but it is important to look at when we're talking about Hashimoto's or autoimmune conditions and things like that, it's important to, you know, they can be autoimmune conditions. So looking at inflammatory foods that we're taking um, and a lot of the times removing gluten from the diet because it's highly inflammatory and autoimmune conditions, you know, can be linked to things like celiac disease and things like that, autoimmune issues. So looking at removing gluten and highly inflammatory foods like dairy and soy, and even all the way down into uh, the meats and the, the protein sources that we have. So looking at making sure that you're eating hundred percent organic and antibiotic, you know, free hormone free foods when it comes to chicken 
and really reducing the amount of red meat that we eat because it can be highly inflammatory and focusing on, you know, things like salmon and omega-3 rich foods and getting a lot of those cruciferous vegetables and, you know, dark leafy greens and our healthy grains and things like that. So liver health, we, you know, you touched on how important that is too. And if we have condition, thyroid conditions, you know, removing alcohol from our diet, you know, maybe not entirely because that scares people when we say no more red wine, but reducing the amount of alcohol because I get a lot of people who are like, wait, what? Okay. If, if you don't want to get rid of your red wine, then you have to take some NAC to support yeah. your liver. So yeah. we won't take the red wine away. We'll add a nutritional supplement to protect you from the wine. Um, one of the things I was going to say, cause I love that there was a question about food. You know, I mean, we both, we both are nutritionists and love nu nutrition or good food as medicine. And one of the proteins that is so good for the thyroid is lamb. It is anti-inflammatory. People don't consume a lot of it. They ge generally tend to eat chicken and beef. Uh, but lamb is something that is, it's actually got a little bit of iodine in it. So it's actually a positive. And it's anti-inflammatory. And because we don't eat a lot of it, we haven't created sensitivities to it as well. So mm -hmm. things like that. And you're right. You know, the, the fatty acid rich fish are, are just so incredibly important. But I mean, ultimately, I think if we did deep breathing exercises every day, said no, yeah. um, really. And, you know, we you and I have talked about this. Uh, women's lives are incredibly stressful. Not that men's lives are not, but we were just on a trip together, you and I, and women have to get the entire, we get the entire family ready before yeah. we go on our trip so that yeah. they're well looked after for the whole seven days we're gone. And everything is looked after. There's not a lot of time for women for their own health because they're raising children, cleaning their house, you know, driving their kids to sports games. I mean, especially right now, I'm sure you're eating dinner in the car every night. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's a lot of stress for yeah. people. And this is really wreaking havoc with our thyroid. And I think that the, we did a huge disservice to people, mm -hmm. uh, women, especially recommending soy. Like 20 years ago, everybody was recommending soy. Yeah. And that was the worst thing we could have done because that decimated the thyroid gland in women. And if you're still consuming soy today and you have any of the symptoms that we talked about, you really mm -hmm. need to get it out of your diet because- it's very harmful for blocking the uptake of thyroid hormone. It also stops your red blood cells from carrying oxygen. It it really is an anti-food in my opinion. Yeah. And it was toted on for so long that it was good for you. Yeah. And a lot of people are starting to realize. And, and there's more research out there that's showing it's actually not. Um, but you're right about the self-care and like looking after ourselves as women. And I know, um, yeah, we just carving out that time to, you know, yeah, self-care, um, you know, look after ourselves, listen to our bodies. I know I'm guilty of it even still to this day where I feel like I'm running off of adrenaline, drinking two or three cups of coffee a day, not eating throughout the day like I should. We should be eating every couple hours, you know, making sure that we're not, coffee is not a food. I love coffee. We all love coffee, but it is not a food. Um, and it's actually really hard on our, our adrenal glands. It's a stimulant, right? And it actually works against you. So if you're feeling tired all the time, you're reaching for that caffeine, you know, you're kind of, again, working against yourself. So really not feeling bad about taking care of yourself and, and wanting to, to feel better. Um, I know I've been there many of times where I'm like, Ugh, I just feel like garbage and I'm not looking after myself. But, you know, as we get older, these signs and symptoms I talked about in the beginning, they just get louder and more um, prevalent in, in our daily lives. We start to notice things, you know, we start to slow down or other health issues start to arise because our body is like, enough, we need to pay attention. Um, and so if you're tuning in tonight because you have questions about your own thyroid health or maybe some of the things that we're talking about, you know, that's your body kind of saying, hey, um, you know, we need to look at the, the bigger picture of what's going on. And that's what this whole women's series is about, is all of the things that we go through as a woman or as a woman um, that sometimes, you know, some of the women and I and I wrote about this is 
a lot of the times when I talk to women, especially in my age group of between 40 and 50, they're like, well, I've always lived like this. Like, especially when we talk about our periods, they've always been like periods have always been like this. They've always been super heavy or, you know, I've just, I've always been constipated. That one always shocks me. Um, and cause nobody wants to talk about constipation or their bathroom habits, but as nutritionists, that's all we do is we talk about it. This is, you can tell a lot by your washroom habits, by the way, ladies, I can tell you sit down with Lorna and I, and we're going to talk about your nutrition <laughs> We're going to ask how often you go to the bathroom. And when you tell me your washroom <laughs> habits, I'll be like, okay, let's discuss this. Um, but a lot of women don't want to discuss it. And it just shocks me how many times people are like, well, I've always just gone to the bathroom once a week. This is normal for me. And I'm like, but yeah. this yeah. is not normal. You may think it's normal for you because you've lived this way ever since you were even a child. Like kids can have, you know, undiagnosed thyroid conditions from the moment they're born. But generally other signs come up with that and they're diagnosed later on. But a lot of times kids, you can, you can have an undiagnosed thyroid condition from, you know, a young age. And these are some of the symptoms that have been happening and constipation is one of them. Oh, and without a doubt. It's you know, crazy. constipation, weight gain, period problems, heavy periods, depression, <sighs> anxiety, these, you know, hair loss, thinning hair children yeah. who have super thin hair. I mean, if you've got an overweight, depressed teenager with heavy periods and thinning hair, they need to have their thyroid and their iron checked. And by the way, iron and thyroid go hand in hand. I did an entire YouTube video on the connection between low thyroid and low iron. So yeah. the two, the two often are directly linked, just like having, you know, adrenal issues as well. And yeah. And next week, we're going to talk about perimenopause, which perimenopause is all about period problems, mood swings, weight gain, hair loss. So, you know, this is where we're really going to get into the meat of what happens when you don't fix something like your thyroid, which is just an underlying. So I, I wanted to reiterate that people should get their thyroid tested. They need a TSH and you yeah. don't accept when your doctor says it's normal. It has to be below two because the range of normal is 0.5 to 5.5 and you won't get diagnosed with low thyroid until it's above five. And we don't want your TSH above two. So it's really important that you start asking what are the results, understanding that mm -hmm. the normal range for thyroid is way too broad and yes. you want it to be under two. Yeah. And I think some people get confused with that too, when they look at, because now we have access to our, re our results online. And I think some people do get confused because when we think of low thyroid hypothyroidism, we think that our results should be lower. But when we're talking about the TSH, when Lorna's saying it should be above two to be considered um, that there's an issue with thyroid, 5.5 um, is where they'll consider it. So we want to look at the higher scale when she's talking about that. So yeah, above two and unfortunately, the normal range is 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 very broad and things can start, you know, you can have uh, conditions when she's talking about uh, being above two. So make sure to ask and look. And if you see that, you know, yeah, ask to pay you. I think you can pay privately through um, Life Labs now to get that or push for your doctor to to do additional testing or go see a naturopath to get to get those labs, especially yes, if you have get... a lot of these symptoms. Well, sure. If you. Exactly. And especially if you do, the other thing I wanted to address, because you're taking desiccated thyroid, mm -hmm. I don't have anything against Synthroid, by the way. And I like Cytomel as well, which is a mm -hmm. T3 thyroid hormone. And those are both prescription medications. And for if you don't have a doctor who knows how to prescribe desiccated thyroid, you really need someone who's going to take the time to give you the right dosage and monitor it because it takes a little yeah. while to use desiccated thyroid and get the dose right. Mm -hmm. So if your doctor has never done desiccated thyroid, I would not go to them for desiccated thyroid. I would use the, the prescription for uh, either Synthroid with a little tiny bit of Cytomel. That would be, that's the, that's, the that's magic just stuff. as good as <laughs> using desiccated thyroid for many, many people. And yeah. if you do have a doctor like yours who does know how to prescribe desiccated thyroid, then definitely that's a great route to go as well. Oh, for sure. I, I'm sure I probably, and like I said, I, 
as we're talking about making sure that we look after ourselves. Um, yeah. And I am not perfect, but I probably most likely should get my levels checked again because it has been a while with COVID. And even having been um, diagnosed over, I think it's almost been five years, I can tell when my levels are off because I'm so in tune with the symptoms now. So before I was living with a lot of the thing and a lot of these symptoms and being like, okay, I kind of know something's off. Now I can tell when, you know, my thyroid levels are when I'm under too much stress, um, you know, weight gain, I can, you know, just recently chest pain, a lot of anxiety, not sleeping well. Um, I'm 42. So I even notice I get the night sweats now. So there's a lot of things that are associated now that I can recognize being like, at my levels, I probably should get those checked. So maybe I should do some homework for this series and go get my levels checked. So we can discuss it later. <laughs> yeah, We've we can talk about together. them next week. <laughs> <laughs> I just had mine tested and I'm I've always been borderline hyperthyroid. So I'm so on the other end. hyperthyroid is, is below 0 0.05 and I'm always a, hover around 0 0.06, 0 0.07. Maybe yeah. if I'm lucky, I get close to one, but I've always been in that range. So I'm the person who has to be careful not to tip it the other way because hyperthyroid is a deadly condition. You know, you can have a thyroid storm and not do so well. So when probably the reason, if there's anybody on the call tonight wondering why we haven't talked about hyperthyroid, it's a very serious medical condition that um, should really be left to the experts. And thankfully it's less than 5% of the population that gets hyperthyroid. And we use um, certain nutrients for that one as well, but it, it's in my opinion, better left to the endocrinologist to treat. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. And I think, um, you know, just when I mentioned my age too, and I don't know how many, the age of the women that are joining us in, but you mentioned in the beginning, just how many women are being diagnosed and not being diagnosed, misdiagnosed, but a lot of women tend to get their diagnosis during their perimenopausal years, which is between our forties and our fifties. Um, and, and, you know, you've been living with this for quite some time. So, you know, it doesn't matter what age you're at, if you're joining us to get your thyroid checked, but you know, it is very common at this stage because we have so many other things happening in our body, um, that we'll get, you know, we'll think it's perimenopause. We're in that, that year, which those years, which we'll talk about next week, but you know, um, we'll start to have the other symptoms of our, our thyroid and our adrenal glands. So well, lots I think it's of a good, it's a really good point. And I think next week, what we should do is tell people what tests to have so yeah. that they know every year, you know, do it, schedule it at the same time every year. Maybe you want to do it in January and you go and get a series of tests and then keep copies of those test results. Yeah. So you can compare them over the next decade, because a lot of these things tend to get worse as we get older if we don't solve the problem. Well, that's true. Things don't just go away if we ignore them, because um, our body definitely reminds us all the time, like, hey, I'm not happy. Um, you need to fix some things. So you're absolutely you're, you're absolutely right. I'm just going to go through some of these questions because uh, I'm looking at our time. We've had already had such a good conversation here, but a lot of this we have answered. So there was some questions. Um, so one of the questions, this is a good one, and it is with about iron. So do you recommend women supplement with iron while taking thyroxine? Oh, absolutely. I think women should take iron from the day. Well, yeah. let me be really clear. Everyone needs iron, especially our children, because if mom did not have adequate iron when she was pregnant, the kids mm -hmm. are born already iron deficient. And then we're not eating a lot of iron rich foods. We should be eating about 20 milligrams of iron from our diet every day. According to the latest research, we're getting eight milligrams. And that's if you eat meat, by the way, most of us now are going plant-based. So it's even yeah. worse and it's only going to get worse. Yeah. You need iron as a woman to make your hormones. You cannot make estrogen and progesterone without iron. You need adequate iron. You mm -hmm. cannot make serotonin, your happy hormone without iron. If you already have heavy periods, two heavy periods in a row and you're anemic, so then you're just putting your finger in the dike, trying to stop the iron from flowing out of you every month. So yeah, we all need iron. Women should take iron every single day. You know, all of these warnings around iron, that's when you take a lot of iron. 
but we should be taking 10 milligrams of iron every single day. That's elemental iron and mm -hmm. kids as well. And if you're pregnant, you should take 15 to 30 milligrams of iron. And if you, um, you know, go get it tested. The crazy thing is the leading reason for hair loss in women is yeah. low iron. Yeah. And and low thyroid combine the two and you've really got a problem. And yet every time people go to the doctor with the hair loss, they're told, oh, you're under stress or you're getting old or it's common. It's not. <laughs> it's a nutrient right. deficiency or it's a hormone yeah. deficiency and we need to fix it. So the short answer is yes, everyone needs iron. Elderly people, kids, athletes. If you have teenagers who are athletes, especially girls in sports, they mm -hmm. absolutely need iron. Yeah, I, you know, um, yeah, absolutely. And women, this is another thing is that women, unless you go and get your yearly physicals and your doctor checks that box to check your ferritin and your iron levels, a lot of times women walk around, they are low iron and anemic. And again, some of the symptoms, like you said, hair loss and fatigue is another one of those things for women yeah. too. So I know a few women who've had heavy periods, weight gain, um, you know, things like I've just been living like this. And then they finally get into the doctor to do a physical and they're like, oh, my iron levels are like 25. And they've been like yeah. this for a long time. And they've never thought about getting their iron levels checked. They've never thought. This. And a lot of times too, women will be like, well, I, I eat a lot of meat. Iron's actually very hard to absorb in our diet. Yeah. Um, even if we do eat a lot of iron rich fortified food, it's really hard to absorb. A lot of women who actually take iron supplementations, um, some of them, they have a hard time with that as well. So you have to make sure that you're getting the testing. You got to take the right support. Um, and it's just one of those other things that women don't actually, you know, they don't pay attention to either is our iron level, especially if you have heavy periods or you did have them. Even childbirth. I know if with my second daughter, I hemorrhaged after, after having her. I mean, she was 12 pounds, but I had a big baby and I hemorrhaged after and even after I had my daughter, my doctor didn't even recommend getting my iron levels checked and or recommend going on an iron supplement. So those are some things um, that we need to look at when we're, we're women uh, and asking our doctors. There's a couple of good questions, more questions here, and then I'll let everybody, we're going to give do a giveaway and we will be back next week. Otherwise, we'll sit here talking all night. Um, but I had a good question for you here, Lorna, that somebody had asked. Thank you so much, you guys. Can you see these questions at all, Lorna? Or no? No. Okay, I was gonna say, as we're like, if you're wondering, I'm doing strolling, there's been a lot of a lot of this we have um, talked about. Um, one of this, yeah, so this, I thought this was a great one, because us both being pushy when it comes to women's health and like standing up for ourselves. But this, this one question was my doctor only tests if specific symptoms, can you request and demand specific tests? And so <laughs> Either. This you is my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, first off, um, remember that in Canada, it's your tax dollars that are paying for your medical care and it's your body. And I walk into my doctor's office with a list of tests. She always says, well, what do you want me to check? Because she knows that I'm not going to probably listen to what she says anyways. I'm just going to go there for all the tests and then go fix myself. But um, yes, you can ask for whatever tests you want. Uh, they tend, they're, the only one that they won't do is this T3 and T4. Because unless your TSH is out of whack or your antibodies, your thyroid mm -hmm. antibodies are out of whack, they won't do it. And it's not the doctors, it's actually the, the government won't pay for it unless that's out of whack. But you could go pay for that privately through a naturopath or life labs or somebody else, but no, it's your body and you should walk in there every year and ask for a series of tests yeah. and get the results. And then, you know, in shows like this, we're happy to help you understand what those tests mean. And the great news about life labs is they give you the normal range and then they tell you your number. So it's really simple and easy to read as well. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I definitely, that was part of the main reason I started this series and why I've said redefining women's health is that yeah, this is your body and you're in control of it. If you know something's wrong, you need to demand and, and ask questions. Um, Cause I feel like a lot of women, and I've just seen another comment come here is that a lot of the times do doctors don't listen or they brush off a lot of the symptoms that women are going through. And oh. we feel, 
we feel crazy and we feel like a hypochondriac and that thing we're making things up. And then we find ourselves Googling late at night, diagnosing ourselves with all sorts of things. Um, we've all done it. I'm sure we have all sorts of different yeah. diseases, but really when it comes down to it, it's just like, you know, if the doctor would have listened to us the first time or done the tests, then, you know, things could have turned out differently. Well, so. I'll, I'll tell you the story about one of my closest friends. She went to the doctor probably 10 times a year for five, maybe seven years complaining about her periods. Mm -hmm. um, they did one ultrasound in all of those years and nothing else. And then her doctor, which she'd seen, you know, 10 times a year for seven years was gone. And a young new doctor was taking over for that visit. And he did one check on her and she immediately was sent to women's hospital and she had ovarian cancer. And the, if they would have done any investigation the seven years earlier, she wouldn't have ended up with stage three, stage four ovarian cancer. So it's your body, it's your yeah. life. And if you think there's something wrong, uh, demand help. And the Absolutely. other thing is every province in this country has a college of physicians and surgeons. If your doctor is brushing you off with your female problems, write a letter to the College of Physicians and Surgeons. And I can tell you, if every single woman in this country started telling the College of Physicians and Surgeons that doctors are not taking us seriously, they will change it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. They will. Um, I'm just sorry. I'm looking here for a couple more questions and we'll let you go. But I think we've answered a lot of these, Lauren. Lots of people have said good session. So thank you so much. She's a wealth of knowledge. I'm so glad she's joined us on this series, you guys. We have so much good stuff coming up for uh, the next couple of weeks. There are a lot of questions here about perimenopause and the effects of our thyroid and if it can push us into early uh, perimenopause. I don't know if you want to touch on that at all right oh. now, or we can save it for next week. So you'll have to tune in for next week if you're questioning that. Because we I will think go we should do it next that. week because yeah. it's really the crux of why we're seeing women go through menopause, yeah. not just perimenopause, but menopause in their 40s. So I yeah. think we should definitely have a chat about that next week. Okay, well, let's leave it there because that, that gets you guys all coming back to join us next week, 6.30. We're going to talk all about perimenopause, the do's, the don'ts, the facts, the myths, and everything around it. Um, we do have a winner for our gift basket. Um, so every week we will be giving away a prize. Um, this week we are going to be giving away a women's health basket from Herbaland um, with a women's multi and some vegan collagen booster and some calm gummies that help with your adrenal glands you guys um so our lucky winner is cynthia gibbons so congratulations C cynthia thank you so much for joining lorna and i this evening um next week nature's fair will give us the contact information to send that off so if you want to reach out to uh nature's fair directly and send your contact information um we can send that off to you we both appreciate you guys uh tuning in tonight sorry about last week but we're here we got technology on our side um, and again, thank you for joining the, the, the women's series with Nature's Fair and Lorna Vanderheg and myself. So thank you. And we will see you guys all next week at 630. Thank you, awesome. Lorna. Thanks, thank everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Shalane. Thank you, Lorna. Thank you, everyone, for being here tonight. And yeah, Cynthia, I've got your contact details, so I will be in touch to coordinate your prize. Have a great night, Bye. everyone. We hope to see you thank next week. Thank you. Take care. Yeah.